All deceased members were known to each other, and it's believed that the alleged suspect uh, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I don't believe he resides at the residence, but um, I'm still waiting for our homicide team to confirm those details. Uh, there was one person uh, that was uh, not deceased. Uh, she suffered a gunshot wound, a serious but non-life-threatening injury. Uh, that person was taken, I believe, to a local hospital. I'm not sure if she was taken to another hospital afterwards. Uh, she's expected to make a full recovery. And uh, she, I believe, resides here. And like I said, all family members, so they're all known to each other. Uh, that vehicle that was located in front of the residence, uh, it was parked uh, the wrong way, facing uh, oncoming traffic in front of the residence. That vehicle was seized by our forensic officers. So we are going to be examining that vehicle and trying to link uh, that to this crime scene, trying to see whether or not it's the suspect vehicle, was it driven by the suspect, who owns the vehicle. So there's a lot of uh, investigative uh, steps that we still have to take, uh, but it is part of the crime scene. Just by reading the call early this morning, it was a quite a chaotic scene. Uh, even for the residents uh, in the area, a lot of callers calling in stating that they were hearing a lot of the gunshots, a lot of uh, screaming coming from this residence. Uh, so when officers arrived as well too, they did also hear uh, gunshots and they also heard some sort of a commotion in that residence. Uh, it wasn't until uh, our tactical support team attended, they were able to safely enter the residence and that's when they made that grisly discovery of uh, five deceased parties within that residence.